Birdman for Birdman on the Mountain, and it's time for the Community Shout. This time, of course, sponsored by the town of Pine Top Lakeside. And starting us off, right off the bat, of course, on WMI-TV and Sholo TV, I've got Miss Melena Spillman. How are Hi, you? I'm great. How are you? Good. So you are a girl <laughs> that girls like to hate right now, even though they love you. There's a couple that I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. my wife's in that category of, of frenemy at the moment. Like, right? Oh, I love her. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure Angie so is too. A ticket. One ticket. One twenty-five dollar ticket. That's what they say, you know. It only takes one to win. If you wouldn't have bought it, you wouldn't have won it. No. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. Got that nice little uh, every girl wants one. I know. I didn't wear it today (laughs) because but I did wear it yesterday to work. Don't want to rub it in too much. Not too much. It's that tennis bracelet from the summit gala. So uh, we all had a blast and uh, went home tired. Yes, it was a really fun event. Cool. Yeah. I love the balloons. Good. The balloons are my favorite. Oh my gosh. They turned out so awesome. And the decorations kids, are great. My kids are still loving the one we have in our house. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I bet. And the basket. And I'm the basket, assuming. Yes. Yeah. One girl yeah. was like, well, it doesn't float. It doesn't float. I'm like, well, we don't want it to float. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Big, huge green balloon. So anyways, uh, Pine Top Lakeside. Yes. Uh, what do we've got going on in that area right now? So we're wrapping up our softball, our summer softball co-ed. Um, and, uh, then we have an exciting new event coming up, Uh-oh. um, on August 18th. Oh yeah. <laughs> we have our, um, inaugural Pine Top Lakeside Days. Nice. So, um, we're also, uh, having bed races, mattress down the mountain. Bed races will start at 8 a.m. Um, kind of in front of the new town hall. Okay. That um, was the big question is where is it going to yes, happen? Yes. Uh, the race. So, in. in I mean, I know some people know about bed races yeah. um, and, and the others don't. So what it really is, is it's about a 16th of a mile and you push the bed. It's a team of five and you have one person as the driver. Now you don't have to have a steering mechanism on the bed. It doesn't, you can put a fake steering wheel or, or you can have a steering mechanism either way, but you don't, you're not required. Um, so you have four pushers and, um, the, there's a couple of requirements as far as width, you know, it has to be a certain width and it can't right. be more than a certain width. And all of that is on our Facebook, on our website. Um, and then you have to have all four wheels touching the ground. So, oh, see. and you have to have a mattress see. included. Oh, you got to have a mattress. You got to have a mattress. Does it have the box spring or just mattress? Nope. Just the mattress. Okay. So my question is, is there going to be categories? Because uh, I can already hear people grumbling because, you know, fire departments, police departments, not so much a police, sorry guys, uh, fire department, and then uh, CrossFit teams, mm-hmm. I've heard. So is it everybody against everybody? Everybody or? against everybody for the, the first year. Um, we're going to see how many we get, how many beds we get, how many teams. Um, but we do have two prizes. We have a prize for the fastest time, and we have a prize for the most creative well, so, there you go. So yeah. that's, that's kind of an easy way to have at it is go the most creative. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, so we'll have judges and then Pine Top Lakeside Days will start at 11 a.m. at Mountain Meadow and we have a wood carving com- competition. So we have several local wood carvers. Um, most well known on the mountain is uh, Trent Penrod from the Burley Bear. Yep. He will be there. Um, we'll have a competition. We have three committed so far. We're working on at least five. And um, they will have four hours to carve um, something in a category that we choose to give them. So it could be a category of wildlife or heroes or whatever you name it. The category yeah. and yes, not, not beforehand. Not so beforehand. No planning. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. Very yeah. Good. So um, and then at the end of their four-hour period at three o'clock. We'll have a judging competition, and we have some judges, and they will pick the winner, and the winner will get a cash prize, and then we'll auction off the each of the carvings. Cool. So, awesome. Yeah. And then the and auction we'll have, will sort of show off uh, the, the people's choice in, exactly. there, in effect, won't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. And then we'll, um, we'll have vendors, and um, we're working on getting some sponsors and potentially some um, live music. We'll have some food vendors, um, retail vendors. Um, I believe the historical society is going to come and do maybe sell some pies. Oh, they cool. haven't awesome. officially said what exactly they're going to do, but that was an idea. Um, 
And uh, yeah. So, so are they going to close off a portion of the freeway whenever they? Or yes, the road, yeah, we're okay, not going to close highway? the entire road. So just so because the down and juice will still hold the category of the yes. only entire roadway closure. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> for now. For now. It's on. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I love it. The yeah. Jolo days at the beginning of the summer and Pine Top Lakeside days at the end of the summer. Yeah. And because you know, of- we really wanted to have it um, in July because the anniversary of incorporation is July 24th uh-huh. for the town of Pine Top Lakeside. Um, but it just, July, there's so much going on and, you know, we, we've already got a ton of people up here. Yeah. So we, we kind of pushed it off. We were going to have our community picnic. And so now we're incorporating all of that. So That's we'll have an smart. equipment rodeo, tug of war contest, and we are having the fire departments and police departments. Well, there you go. Okay. Tugging off against each other. That's awesome. That's considerate and it just makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So uh, that event is probably the big thing we're focusing on. Now. Yes. Now, something else is going on that uh, people have been grumbling about, talking about, um, guessing about. Mm-hmm. Um, all about uh, Woodland Lake Park. Yes. Okay. And specifically the lake. Yes. So I had heard some rumors and, and I actually saw posts like, oh, I think they're draining it to give the water away or mm-hmm. I don't know, whatever the heck was going on. But can you sort of explain what's Absolutely. going on with that? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's kind of a tricky situation with Woodland Lake, the lake itself, and then the park. The park is forest service owned. The town leases the park. The lake there's a dispute over who actually owns the land that the lake oh, wow. is on. Okay. Just, you know, and, and not like a dispute, like a legal dispute or anything, but, you know, the irrigation, there's an irrigation district. Okay. The Shola Water Users Group. They own majority of the water rights oh, in the okay. lake. So there are shares and, and water rights that you can buy. The town owns a couple, not very many. Um, but that water is used for irrigation purposes. Okay. The Sholo Irrigation Company has not used very much water this year. The problem that we have with the lake is it is not very deep. And it's not a naturally occurring lake. It is not a naturally occurring. It was set up as a irrigation district. Actually, it was set up, um, there was a steam-powered sawmill over near Rainbow Lake. And Woodland Lake was set up as a reservoir to use the water to for steam steam. to power the sawmill. And then... That ultimately when the um, sawmill closed in a a long time ago, I don't recall the exact date, um, then the irrigation company formed and took over. That makes sense. So I know there has been some rumors out there that Sholo is stealing our water and, you know, and all that. That's not true. Sholo is not stealing our water. (laughs) But they're not even using it. No. And, And the water does go from Woodland Lake to Rainbow Lake. To Sholo Lake. So, okay. I mean, it, it is channeled. However, it's not just the design of the lake itself is not an optimal design. It so, is yeah, so kind of shallow. You. you said it's so shallow. Yes, going. it's so shallow. So it allows for a lot of evaporation. So with our dry conditions and, I mean, relatively zero snow this year, um, there was nothing to fill the lake. So it's just kind of could gradually decreased in volume and then you add the evaporation and the the dry conditions and the warmth that, that we've had the la- this last year especially that's really exacerbated the conditions so the other concern was the fact that some people thought that they wouldn't because it's so um low that they wouldn't be able to to pull water from it in case of fire but you told me it is not possible you even if the lake is full the lake is not deep enough for or nor big enough for a helicopter to come in and actually get water from Woodland Lake to use for fires. So that is just kind of a a, a misnomer concern. It's not okay. It's not a valid concern because it's just not possible. So mostly just the ducks and the fish are the ones that are really uh, worried about the water level. And yeah. that's simply been because of it's been dry. And actually, you know, fishing's typically not that great at Woodland. It's awesome right now, and I can oh, attest to that. Because they're all, they're all bundled <laughs> they're in an area. They're all right there. Yeah, there you so, go. Cool. Um, and, and right now, actually, our town crews are, um, have worked with the Forest Service and Game and Fish, and we're cleaning up some of the cattails. Um, so that, that helps with water retention as well as um, allowing for more fish habitat. But we are still keeping several spots for cattails for, for duck habitat. And um, so. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So anything else we need to talk about uh, this week? 
Parade applications are available. So Fall Festival Parade, September 29th, 10 a.m. Um, this year's theme is Find Your Adventure. Mm. So, um, you know, it's open for lots of imagination. And just so. to remind people, this is different. The town is now taking back over yes. the parade. The town so has taken back the chamber, over. Mm -hmm. The town's now going to run the parade. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. So um, I'll have the, the application um, as well as the flyer and everything. I can email to anybody that requests it. Um, and later today, it'll be up on both the Visit Pine Top Lakeside website or pinetoplakeside.com, as well as pinetoplakesideaz.gov. Okay, we'll include the link here as well, because she'll give me that, and we'll make sure it gets added in. So you just click and get your parade application. Yeah. It's always a, I think it's, uh, that and Sholo 4th of July are pretty, like, I don't know, they're about yeah. the same big, big largeness. And parade. Yes, Let's yes. That way. So I'd love to have some record-breaking float numbers for this year. Very so. cool. Yeah. Awesome. And, and you know a little bit about running the parade. So. Just a, a little bit. <laughs> Very awesome. Yeah. Anything else? I Not that I could think of at the moment. I'm Ooh. sure there's going to be lots more on our next show. <laughs> well, once again, Melania Spillman with the town of Pine Top Lakeside. Thanks for being here. Appreciate Thank you. your time. Okay, hang out. Uh, got another person coming up. We'll be right back here at Birdman on the Mountain Community Shout. Okay, still hanging out here at Birdman Media Studios. Back with me, I have Allison Hefner with the Navajo County Public Health Services District. How you doing? Good, good. So we've got another one of the uh, departments to talk about today. Yes. And what is it? We're going to talk about vital records. Okay. So what exactly are vital records? Birth and death certificates, Very basically, cool. is what you need. So we do issue those. Um, uh, we provide um, those. You can actually, we provide same-day service, too. So if you come down to the county, um, and if you were born in Arizona Hospital, it, that's one of the stipulations. You have to be born in Arizona Hospital. Any year, as long as you're registered. So the hospital would do that. That's how you become registered. Um, corrections, amendments to them, acknowledgments of paternity. Um, you have to, it's from uh, birth year of 1997 to current um, that you can amend that through um, Navajo County. And then death certificates available as long as the death occurred in Arizona um, and was registered. And that's a lot of confusion um, with some places. If you have a family member who dies in another state on vacation or something, um, you would have to get the death certificate from that state. Uh, so in doing this, it's, very, it's not very pricey at all. It's only $20 for um, the birth certificate um, and then, uh, or, or the death certificate, but you cannot pay cash. So this is no cash. This is, um, you can accept, they accept money orders, credit card or debit cards. Just remember no cash. Now for amendments or any changes to either it's $30. Um, and, uh, there's mail pickup options as well. Cool. So what do we, what do they need? Um, what's required for them to be able to do this? Okay. So applications completed and signed by the eligible individual. Um, so, uh, temporary permit guardians must have, um, valid certificate certified court order of guardianship. Um, other than that for birth certificate, it's usually the parents, the legal parents of the child, um, and, or an eligible individual. A uh, valid government picture, like, so your your driver's license is a very good example of what to use. Problem is that sometimes people come in with driver's license that aren't readable, or it's a very old driver's license. Some of them are cut in half. If your driver's license has any of these issues, um, you it does not count as a form of ID, and you need to go to the MBD and, and get that fixed. Yeah, just from your website, it says expired, damaged, taped, cracked, broken, faded IDs, not accepted, no... no exceptions. No exceptions. And yes. And if they have a temporary paper ID, then that they have to make sure that they have additional documents to show that that is them with their legal name on both of those additional documents. And I would suggest if that was the case that I would call um, Navajo County Public Health Vital Records and we'll give you the number a little bit later. There you go. Um, so anyways, uh, proper fee is paid by money order, debit, or credit card only. We're saying that again. Um, cash is not accepted. Um, in applying for death certificates, you must show proof of relationship. So that could be a marriage certificate, a will, um, certified court orders, uh, anything, birth certificate, anything like that. And their insurance, right? Yes, okay. and insurance can work as well. Um, not all those, you just need to show that there's a connection. Um, so I'm going to read this verbatim so you have the normal business hours. So Navajo County Public Health Vital Records is located in Holbrook, 
One of the locations is Holbrook at 117 East Buffalo Street. And they are open there Monday through Thursday. And they are closed all Fridays and federal holidays. So Navajo County Public Health Vital Records in Sholo is at 600 North 9th Place. Um, and they're open um, Fridays, say, only. Fridays only. Yes, from 8.30 a.m. until 11 a.m. Then they, they, they're off until 1.30 to 4 p.m. Um, so you, you can get to that if we're Sholo residents. And then they rut- routinely travel to Winslow and Cayenta. Um, but please call them to make sure that they're going to be there at that time. Um, they usually go based on need. So uh, the number there is, or to find out is 928-524-4750. Um, and call to confirm before you travel. I mean, that's the best thing to do. You don't want to get there and something happen and they end up being closed or not making it that week. You want to be able to make sure you touch base and they can uh, provide you that vital record that you need. Um, so for further questions, you can call this number again, 928-524-4750, or visit our website at navajocountyaz.gov, or even you can go to the ADH, A-Z. azdhs.gov forward slash licensing forward slash vital dash records dash index and that can take you to the information you need as well thank you once again and that's vital records from allison hepner with the navajo county public health services district thank you so ali's got actually another thing to talk about so let's chat with her about that and that's going to be the children are excited about right the children with special health care needs um so not that we've been talking about this all the time, but um, so we have a resource fair on the 28th and this has been huge, a huge undertaking in trying to identify uh, resources that service our community and we're almost up to 40. And that's a big darn deal. We keep having more coming in and when I, I say we're almost up to 40, we're at 37 right now and I have five people that I'm waiting on or five resources that are waiting to confirm that. Um, so we'll be accepting resources up until the day of the event. Uh, this event um, includes some speakers. We have um, a bump and bleed and where it can lead, uh, understanding brain injury in early childhood from Susan Wolf. We also have food and gut brain connection and a demo of this. Uh, a lot of them are finding that functional medicine is um, helping kids with ADHD and even autism and and, um, uh, cognitive issues. Uh, Removing the mystery of special ed. So that's about IEPs. And I mean, there's a lot of parents out there that need to know and need help understanding IEPs. They can be... What's an IEP? It's an individual education plan. There we go. So, and that's what you get at schools. Um, And then mental health first aid. We have when is it autism, when is it sensory processing, and then we have little things that can make a big difference for your kids, and it's more of a homeopathic type of things that you could be doing at home that might help their allergies or their asthmas or things like that. And then at the end of the day, we have a two, um, almost a two-hour panel where the parents will be able to ask questions from Arizona uh, Disability Law will be there. We have uh, Raising Special Kids that will be there that provide a lot of training for parents. We have um, Sholo Special Ed that will be there. And then um, we have Northland Therapies that provide ser- in-home services to children that will be there talking about what they provide. Uh, it's free lunch. We're also providing free lunch. Um, I wish I would have brought the paper because I've listed all the booths that are going to be there, but it's a lot. And there's actually some needles in the haystack we found in the community that will be like, wow, I can't believe we have that. And we're very lucky for having that. Awesome. So if you are interested in coming, um, I would recommend it. We have, um, we're expecting parents, teachers, providers, caregivers, um, first responders. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to advocate for these these agencies and these families. Usually they're the advocator who has to go out and find all these resources. We'll we'll bring them to you. It's a one-stop shop. And just so you know, a child with special health care needs is considered any child over um, what a general child's needs are. So if your child has allergies, that's a special health care need. And we have things for that. If your child has cerebral palsy, obvious special health care needs, ADHD, autism, other mental health disorders, um, you name it. Uh, If a child doesn't need anything, but a, a normal, you know, everyday doctor checkup, then you can still find resources there even for that child. So it's a great opportunity. We have some pediatricians that just came to the community that will be there as well. Um, that's been here maybe, I think, eight months, 10 months. Oh, wow. Maybe. I don't know how long have, have they been there, Dr. Brewer and Dr. Johns. I don't remember. But almost, anyways. Almost a year now. I almost think. a year. Yeah. So, so. 
So this is great. And then lastly, um, this could not have happened without First Things First. Uh, Arizona Department of Health Services, their Office for Children with Special Health Care Needs, and then the Arizona Development Disability Planning Council. Um, those are our big contributors, main sponsors, and then Around the Mountain Pediatric Dentistry came in too to help. So I definitely appreciate those. And then, of course, Navajo County Public Health has been leading the way. So it's very good. Thank awesome. You. Well, thank you very much for that. And remember, it's free. It it's is free. free. It's free. So and we have the out. flyers that will be attached, and there's even a Q code, QR code. To make it easy. Awesome. Please sign up so I know how much food. Thank you very much. Thank you. Allison Hepner with the Navajo County Public Health Services District. Okay, so now uh, I want you to watch something. Hang on and take a look. So, Ali, we're going to talk about what we just saw, which was the hanger dance. Yes, that video always gets me so excited. It's like, oh, the music, the move. <laughs> yes, the hanger dance is in its fifth year. Um, mm -hmm. You can uh, thank a group of people who started that with Jerry Howell heading them about five years ago, and it has morphed into a pretty awesome it's event. It's an awesome event. It's one it's of the, awesome a event. lot of people's favorites events. Uh, you can dress up in that whole era of end of World War II, sort of the uh, USO Hanger dance, it's in a hanger, it's a dance. We have a big band, we have uh, girls that emulate the Andrew Sisters singers. Uh, it's a lot of fun, it's a tribute and a salute to the veterans of the White Mountains. That's specifically what it's for. Uh, it's an expensive ticket, and uh, all you gotta do is, is you get that, check the details on that, and you can find that at the hanger dance. All you gotta do is look up hanger dance uh, Cholo. And it's August 4th, and we could not do it without our sponsors. We have Jill Tinkle. She's a huge sponsor. I have it every year with uh, State Farm. We also have Body Works, New Horizons Physical Therapy. John Antoni helps us out there. Uh, Ro Morning Rose and Livingston Mortuary. They are amazing. The the flower, the flower Everybody loves taking home the centerpieces. Yes, the centerpieces. You win those, um, but they get to take them home. Surprise. Um, you know, White Mountain Independent helped with printing, which was phenomenal for them. Walgreens, the tickets can be given at Walgreens, the Chamber of Commerce, or the VFW. Yeah, you got to get with Scott Kyle, Scott Kyle for the VFW. But, yes. Uh, yeah. And he's he's been a huge help in this whole process. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Oh, Persnickety's is coming yes, in this year. Yes, Persnickety's coming in. Yeah, providing the cupcakes. <laughs> it's so exciting. Um, so there's been a lot of agencies and, um, and organizations coming and getting involved and in kind donations, just like Robertson's Tire. We have the Blue Vase guys that come help set it up. You got to thank Sunrise uh, oh, Air Ambulance for the use of the hangar, the city of Sholo, the county, Navajo County. Um, awesome oh. in providing all kinds of services. It, it's it's a massive amount of people who actually make this happen and make it run so smoothly. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, Royce will be there taking pictures, so you'll get your picture in front of the plane, and it's Mr. 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 Music. Yes. Um, he'll be there. Uh, we have a sound system that um, Rob sets up, Birdman and sets up, and from, Bosley uh, from Poor Station. Station. They provide the drinks as well, which is amazing. Um, we, we just It is a great event. The tickets are only... Yep, they're, they're an inexpensive price. You can inexpensive find price. Okay, <laughs> I can't say that. But um, but yeah, and share. It is August fourth. Share that information out to the community. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, and we hope to see you there because we're selling out pretty quick. So, so go check that out. And get we appreciate yourself. it. Okay, that's going to be it for this edition of the Community Shout here at Birdman on the Mountain. I'm Birdman, uh, thanking everyone watching on the Birdman Media Network, also on the WMI TV Network out there with the uh, White Mountain Independent and Sholo TV. Thanks to all the viewers. Thanks for all your comments. And like I always say, if I don't see you around town, I'll catch you right here on the web. Mm -hmm.